The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services confirming the first human case in the United States of a travel-associated New World's crew worm, a flesh-eating parasite from an outbreak-affected country. Oh, boy, it's, it's, it's just what we needed, right? Just what we were missing. Dr. Iman Sajal, uh, senior scholar at the John Hopkins Center for Health Security and Infectious Disease physician, joining us live from Pittsburgh. Oh, boy. I'm not sure how not serious can a flesh-eating parasite be, and yet I, I do want to begin by asking, how, how serious is it, doctor? From a human health perspective, it's not very serious. This is a oh. pretty rare thing when a human gets infected. This is a major agricultural problem, though. This is a major effort of the U.S. Department of Agriculture to try and stop the incursion of screwworm into North America. The uh, United States had eliminated screwworm. And the fact that there's a big outbreak going on in Central and South America where this is endemic um, is going to lead to travel-related infections, but they're very, very rare in, in humans. Uh, but this is primarily something that affects cows and can be devastating to the agricultural industry. So, so the, the pressing concern is, as you're explaining, is, is for livestock, right? That the cattle industry is, is very much alarmed at the moment. Exactly. We have what we call kind of like an exclusion zone from the United States, so kind of in, the, in Panama, that area, there's an area where they have aggressive control efforts by releasing irradiated flies that are sterile. They mate with the female screwworm flies and the eggs are not viable. That's how we control screwworm. But what's happened is the screwworm has kind of penetrated that exclusion zone in Panama mm. and is now spreading in Mexico. So there is going to be increased activity along the Texas Mexico border to stop screwworms from moving into the United States. And this is going to be a major effort of the USDA to try and stop this because it can cost billions and billions of dollars in, in cattle losses because it can really kill and devastate uh, cattle herds. Right. And this parasite, you know, no, no stranger to to the United States, just eradicated many, many years ago. Right. So what what is what is the protocol? What is the government now doing about it? Well, the biggest thing that they're doing is trying to release more of these sterile flies. So that's uh -huh. a very innovative technological solution where you have these flies that are sterile, male flies. They mate with females. The females lay eggs. Those eggs don't hatch. That decreases populations. So we do that in that exclusion zone in Panama. Now they're going to be making sterile flies in, the, in, in Texas, and they're going to likely be releasing them in a broader area to diminish the... The, the spread of these flies to diminish their numbers. That's primarily what this is going to amount to, is a major agricultural effort. So, Dr. Adalja, I know you, we've clarified that, but I just want to be sure no threat to humans or there shouldn't be a big scare about it. No, there shouldn't be a scare to humans. This is a very oh. rare thing when it infects humans. But obviously, if you're around areas where there are screwworms and you have open wounds, you should be covering those wounds. You should be cleaning those wounds to make sure that flies don't have an opportunity to lay eggs there. They can also lay eggs in your nose, in your ears, in your, in your eyes as well. But it's very, very rare that this happens to humans. The primary way this happens is an open wound in an area where there are screwworms. All right. So to all of our viewers who have open wounds and they're near the proximity of screwworms or ears or nostrils, be aware. Dr. Amish Adalja, a senior scholar at the John Hopkins Center for Health Security, thank you very much uh, for calming us down. Thank you, sir. Thanks.